A man labeled Bhupan Kakka branded as painter. Second class railway carriage, nineteen eighty two. Bhupan Kaka was born in Bombay in 1934. His paintings take as their starting point everyday life in the provincial Indian town where he now lives. But they sell more readily in England and America than they do in India, where their satirical edge is more in evidence. Every morning, Bhupan Kaka goes to the small factory where he is employed part-time as an accountant. He prepares the internal audits. His office uniform is identical to that of his colleague, a Mr. Patel. Side drafts. Bhupen is also here. Can you send all those vouchers also? Okay. okay. Assistant accountant, Mr. I.M. Shah, 1973. Ah, okay. Ah. The values and the tastes of the Indian lower middle classes of which he is part are both celebrated and satirized in his paintings. Mock leather, mock chandeliers, Rexine and Formica furnish Bhupin Kaka's paintings and his family home in Bombay. This is the world from which he has come and to which he still feels that he belongs. He loves it and he hates it. The phrases and the poses of the ads that bloom all over small town India are things to admire and subvert. His own collection is of mass-produced images of popular culture and pictures churned out for pilgrims. Visual cliches culled both from west and east resurface in Kaka's exhibition catalogues, where they send up those art world gurus who claim to know all.
it is not exactly the story, but uh, an introduction I'd written for my catalog. And I find it much easier to write in Gujarati rather than English because Gujarati is my mother tongue and uh, I also write short stories in Gujarati, uh, sometimes not often. And this is how I've written about uh, the paintings. Bardi no pardo. Shivkashi ni hotel ma bapore un khatla par sutosho. Bija khatla ma safed kafni tata lengho peri velani ghas ghasa tunge che. Mathe unala ni garmi chadi hoi. I'm lying in bed in Shivkashi hotel. The ceiling fan makes the circular gestures as if the afternoon heat has gone in its head. The window, the wind thrown off from the fan makes the curtain move. I think if I were to paint this room, what would I do? The first thing is to make a list of all objects I want to paint. Chair, table, the knob of the door, carpet, electric bulb, color of the wall, fan, etc. I select things out of this list. Let's just see how it works. There is one window in the room and the curtain is attached to the window. The curtain moves because of the wind. The color of the curtain is yellow and brown. Because the curtain moves, I see the railings of the window. There are folds on the curtain. Where the fold comes up, it is of light color. How can one paint the curtain? If the curtain is painted with great care and precision, it would look like Persian or Mughal miniature. If painted with spontaneity, it will remind one of Matisse and Vuya. The curtain moves, part of it is dark, another part light. If the borders of the curtain is done quickly with dark color and the inside is left out white portion, it would look like Kaligat painting. But if it is painted like a stone, then it will remind one of a nun leger. The curtain moves a little and is lifted because of the wind. Behind the railing, I see portion of coconut tree, wooden frame, yellow color of the wood. Every portion is clear. I see the clear patterns of the cloth. One is reminded of early Italian paintings Grandma Moses, Henry Russo. The curtain moves like a cloud. The speed of wind increases. It reminds me of Jericho's painting of rafts in the ocean or Renoir's woman running with her clothes like a sail in the ocean. In my painting, the curtain occupies only one-tenth of the whole. I've yet to paint table, chair, bed, wall, ceiling. I have hundreds of alternatives to work with. Say, I, I, I'll uh, define good taste in terms of uh, Indian situation or the way I have understood uh, would be like this as far as paintings are concerned uh, at certain time uh, the good taste uh, did mean uh, a kind of uh, miniature painting and uh, uh, what I started doing I started using a lot of miniature uh, colors in my painting and then contrasting them with the uh, contemporary situation or contemporary people. So there was a kind of tension. But then I also found that uh, these things uh, did not uh, reflect the contemporary situation to me because I, I was hiding myself behind this very beautiful miniature uh, color scheme and then uh, houses and things like that. Also, at that time, my paintings were sold 
to many people you know that uh, most of this elite people they came and bought my painting and then i don't know whether it was against this or whether i felt that i should really uh, try to uh, try to put uh, contemporary things in my painting factory strike 1972 the change uh, they did not like and I, i did not sell for a very long time say about 6 7 years i did not sell anything and these earlier years i really sold many all of the paintings i just sold them so they they did not react to it they they found it too vulgar i did a whole series on uh, trade paintings or small profession like there is one called uh, baba another one watch repairer and there i used uh, most of the colors uh, which i used were very pink and green like the the way they decorate their shops but here also uh, mostly it was concerned with the person and their surrounding or their objects with which they are working Baroda that way is not very lively place a little dull place so you can always paint and i prefer a little dull place for me to work most of the things which i see i forget but uh, the thing which i remember then it it turns into a certain kind of obsession and i piece those things together mentally when i see i do make an effort all the time to be conscious when uh, when i am traveling when i sit with people uh, though sometimes i just go into that uh, thing of dream world
द स्वीट वेंडर 1982 everything one could paint i feel one has to have that much attitude but one doesn't paint because one always restricts oneself to things which one sees or which one chooses to see through grills 1981 most of the time i think about painting and the friends i have most of them are painted also ranchod bhai makwana ranchod bhai comes from a farmer family he has a piece of land about 3 miles from baroda where he grows rice onions and wheat he has two wives and five children about 10 years ago he did bootlegger's business for few years now he does not want to lead that life and therefore he looks after the tea shop when i must know them very intimately before they become part of me and then if i draw then uh, i think uh, i should also get with them emotionally involved before i paint them they they should become a kind of obsession in my mind and once they become then then i can paint them so it continues for few years and then again another person will come and then i draw him something like that ranchod bhai relaxing in bed 1977 i think people in their day to day ordinary um, circumstances say uh, a person combing his hair wearing a shirt these things interest me which 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 are not very spectacular and particularly if you come to india there are so many things which are very spectacular and these things are not even the friends i have they don't look spectacular they don't be spectacular they don't have ideas so that's that's what i mean that uh, i am much more drawn to these things one forms friendship not because one wants to paint it is sometimes that uh, one likes a person and then one would like to know about that person say if i see a person and if i like his attitude then uh, what i would do is that i would subdue myself and try to see things through his eyes and that's how then i will try to go to his place also and uh, see how he lives how he decorates his house what are his requirement man with bouquet of plastic flowers 
He works as a supervisor to Baroda Cooperative Bank. He comes from the middle class family. He studied up to matric, then joined a printing press business with his brother-in-law, and later he started doing building contract work. He is a firm believer in Raja Swami sect from Agra. In the morning, he spends two hours doing satsang, and I join him in the evening satsang with other satsangi. He says he plans to live 100 years, and our relationship was destined, and its roots are in previous birth. My dear friend, 1983. Celebration of Guru Jayanti, 1980. When I started Guru Jayanti painting, I was thinking about Mantenya's mural at Mantova. In uh, this uh, Guru Jayanti also, that way there is a celebration. While people are really not concerned, they are really concerned with their own little world and things like that. Also that uh, there is this idea which I got from reading novels. So many things happen outside. So this whole thing which I want to bring in, a kind of whole universe, to how the main incidents vis-a-vis -vis the small incidents which happen, and I would like to depict those things. I don't like the attitude of people who uh, devise themselves in certain way. Uh, so painting, they have made it uh, a, a kind of act where no one should disturb them and uh, uh, they should be left alone. 
they'll get very tense when they are painting. But for me, I think it is a, is a part of uh, life. You know, the way I, I talk with my friend, I, can, I should be able to paint the way I eat with friends. So that's how I, I look at it. I don't know whether it is a um, consciously constructed thing. At a certain time, they thought that this whole thing is a satire only, and my involvement is absolutely nil. But then later on, it, it seems that it is two-way traffic, that my involvement also is there and there is a certain kind of satire. I don't think uh, an artist uh, can be a very respectable gentleman. When one becomes very respectable, one loses that element of artist or something which he, he, he wants to do. Because then he is ruled by the, uh, by the dictum and things of morality and what he should do and what he should not do. Another thing is that unless an artist is uh, sexually obsessed, a kind of uh, sexual images which make him pain, I feel, something which is very strong in him, which, which he tries to put through paint, uh, use paint as medium. Man Eating Jalebi, middle-class people to sexual thing is very repressed because they they know it is part of it and but uh, they they never make a statement about it or even publicly or within friend I just don't want to make it a very, uh, very dramatic gesture about that erotic element or a kind of uh, making a very rebellious statement. Window cleaner, 1970. 
1982. If you see the Hindi film, it is a very, very uh, good example of middle class taste here because you are not allowed to kiss your girlfriend. But all the time you just move around her and then sensually you try to tickle her and she tries to tickle you through song. I think that is what the whole middle class uh, morality is, at least in India. I don't know about England. Weatherman. 1979. In India, we, we really don't talk about weather and it is an obsession here to talk about weather. So I've done one painting of weatherman. I've done uh, the big charts of weather in his uh, bedroom and then the map of world and also he's trying to ask his wife to come to bed with him. Sometimes people say that I don't know how to draw even. And I, I would say that I, I really don't give so much importance on the drawing as much as on color. Man in Pub, 1979. I think your own weakness, that also should be reflected in painting. And that much one should grant that uh, whatever one is, one can't hide oneself. Uh, behind a painting. It's just standing naked in front of everyone, what you are. You Can't Please All, 1981. There is a old man, father and son. They go to market to sell the donkey. While they are going, <clears throat> there are people who say, why you are walking? Why don't you sit on the donkey? So both of them, they sit on the donkey. Afterwards, people see, they say that, look at these two fellows, they are so inhuman, both of them sitting on donkey. So father gets down and son sits on the donkey. When son is sitting on the donkey, they go forward and then people say, look at this son, this old man is walking and he doesn't have any pity on his father. So the son gets down, father climbs, again they go. Then uh, people say, look at this old man, this young boy, hardly 16, is walking in this son and he doesn't have pity. So both of them, they get down and they decide to carry the donkey. So while they carry the donkey and there's a bridge and they try to cross the bridge and the donkey falls into the river and dies. And while they were burying, uh, the old man says that you really can't please all. I also added a little portion in that uh, fable and that is, I put a, a man uh, in a veranda. He has no clothes, he's nude, and he's looking at the whole scene. And he says that if you can't please all, then I'm going to please myself. And he takes off his clothes. The 
the moral of the story is in life we all the time make social adjustments in order to please people around us we forget our duty towards ourselves what we should do in life and art is to do exactly what one likes the difficulty may be to find out what one likes